Hello humans and welcome to Code for Humans where today I'm going to be teaching you about argparse. So argparse is a Python module that allows us to convert our Python applications into command line applications. So some of you might know that we can actually run Python code from the command line and we do so by saying Python followed by the name of our Python file. So in my case, Python myargparse.py. So argparse allows us to set values and properties from the command line, so we don't actually have to open up our Python file and change stuff. So in this example, what I've done is I've made a base exponent calculator. So we type in a base, we type in an exponent, and it will give us the value of that. So instead of opening up my code and changing the base and the exponent, argparse allows me to do that from the command line. So I defined a B flag for the base, which I'll say is two, and an E flag for the exponent, which I'll say is three. And when I run this, I'll see two to the third power is eight. So just from the command line, I was able to change the values here and get different outputs based on what I typed in. So to get started with argparse, what you need is two things. The first of which is you need to pip install argparse. And the command for that is pip install argparse. So if you don't know how to pip install, I'll link you a video in the top right of your screen and in the description so you can learn how to do that. The second thing is if you don't already have Python in your environment variable, then you need to go do that and I'll link you that as well. To make sure Python is in your environment variable, you can just type Python, and when you hit enter, if you see these three little uh, greater than signs, then you're good to go for the rest of this tutorial. So in this tutorial, I'm gonna be teaching you three things, how to make required positional arguments, mutually exclusive arguments, and required flags. So to get started, I've made this exponent calc file on my desktop, and right now it's just a blank Python file. So to get this started, I'll say import argparse. So the first thing we need to do is create our parser, and that's basically just the Python object that's actually gonna read the text that we type into the command line. So to make that, I'll say my parser is equal to argparse.argumentParser. And if we want, we can set a description for this, and I'll say that is my exponent calculator. So now we need to make arguments for everything the exponent calculator needs. So that would be a base and an exponent. So what I'll do is I'll say parser.addArgument, and the first one I'm gonna call base, and the type of this is an integer. If I want, I can set some help text that will appear when my user types in the help flag, and I'll show you that in just a minute, but I'll say my help text is base arg, and now I'm going to duplicate this just to save myself some typing, and my next argument is gonna be exponent, and the help text for this will be the exponent argument. And this is not very good help text, but that's not important today. Uh, so all I need to do is I need to pull out whatever arguments my user typed into the command line. And the way I do that is I say args is equal to parser.parseargs. When this line of code runs, that means my user has already typed in the base and exponent and hit enter. So now I have pulled whatever base and exponent they entered and I can just print it back to the user. So I'll say print args.base raised to the power of args.exponent. So we're kind of done with this little iteration. So what I'll do is I'm going to open up my command line and I'll drag this over. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change directory to wherever I saved my Python file. So I'll say CD for change directory to my desktop. And if I type dir, then I can see my Python file right here. So I can say, Python exponent calc.py, and now I'm able to run my code. So I'll say my base is two, and my exponent is three, and when I run this, I see eight. So earlier, I called base and exponent required positional arguments. And the reason for that is the first argument is gonna be base, because we defined that first. The next one will be exponent, because we defined that second. So if I change my arguments to three, two, that means I'm gonna get a different answer this time because two to the power of three is different than three to the power of two. Likewise, they're required because if I don't specify both of them, I'm gonna get an error saying that I'm missing a required argument. So you have to have both of them. So that help text I was talking about earlier, I can type Python, the name of my file, dash H, and this will give me help text. So here you can see exponent calc, which is the description of our parser, followed by the positional arguments this requires and some help text for them as well. So 
that's pretty much the basics of arc parse. And from here, I'm just gonna show you some more advanced techniques. So the next thing I'm gonna show you is mutually exclusive argument groups. And before I get into that, let me explain what they are. So this is a group of arguments that we can only use one thing from that group at a time. So this is useful for when you have contradicting arguments. So for example, if I have a quiet flag, it wouldn't make sense to use a loud flag at the same time because I can't be quiet and loud at the same time. So mutually exclusive groups will raise an error if we try to use multiple arguments from that group. So to get started, what I'm gonna do is I'll define my group. So I'll call this arg group and set that equal to parser dot add mutually exclusive group. So now I can add arguments to this group and that'll include them in my mutually exclusive group. So it's gonna be a little bit different than when we defined our arguments up here. And I'm actually going to copy and paste this in and then I'll go back and explain what's happening just to save us some time. So here we have the quiet flag and since it's a flag and not a required argument, we type dash Q and then we have to specify what is the name of this variable and it's gonna be quiet but we have to put two dashes in front of it just because that's what argparse tells us to do. So we're then going to store true and I'll show you why we do that in just a minute. But again, we just have a little bit of help text and this says uh, it'll print a little bit of text if we type the quiet flag and if we type the verbose flag, we're gonna print a lot of text. So why did I store true here? The reason for this is because what it's going to do is quiet or verbose is going to store a true or false value and that's going to allow us to set up if statements to run whatever code we need to. So let's do that now. I'll say, actually I'll copy and paste this then to save us some time as well. So I'm going to delete the print statement we had before and I'll paste this stuff in. So once I fix that spacing, here's what's gonna happen. If they passed in the quiet flag, what we're going to do is just type in the value of the base raised to the exponent. If they type the verbose flag, we're gonna give them a lot of text. We're gonna say whatever base they typed in to the power of whatever exponent they typed in is the calculated value. And then likewise, if they did not say verbose or quiet, then we're going to just say the base caret sign exponent is equal to the calculated value. So before we run our code, let's do some quick review. So when we create optional arguments, what we need to do is create a flag for them, which is a dash followed by a single letter. And then we have to create our variable name and we do so by saying dash dash the variable name. So we did that for a quiet and verbose. And then we say action equals store true. And this is kind of dumb, but when we do that, it actually stores false under each of these variables, quiet and verbose. But they get set to true whenever they're included whenever this flag is included in the command line. So that allows us to set up if statements that says if args.quiet is equal to true, we can run some bit of code. Likewise, we could say if args.verbose is equal to true, then we can run some different code. So let's just run our code and see what's going on. So here I'm on my desktop and I'll say Python exponent calc, and now I can type two, three, and we get neither one of these. So we get the else case. So we get two caret sign three is equal to eight. So if I set the quiet flag this time, so I type my required arguments followed by the flag quiet. When I run this, I just get the value, the calculated value of eight. So again, I could run this with dash V and now I see two to the power of three is eight. So by setting these different flags, I can change how my output gets formatted because that's what I defined to do in this if else block. So that is how we add things to a mutually exclusive group and set them to be optional flags. So the last thing I'm gonna show you is how to make required flags. So I'm going to convert base and exponent into required flags. So the way I do that to start is I'll say my flag for base is going to be dash B and now I need to type that double dash before base. So I'll do the same thing for exponent. I'll say dash E is my flag and dash dash exponent is gonna be the variable name. So these need to be in our program. They can't choose to not use these flags. Otherwise we can't calculate the value of base raised to an exponent because we don't know their values. So we need to set the required parameter. 
I'll say required is equal to true. And I'll do the same thing for exponent. Required is equal to true. So this just forces our user to supply values for base and exponent. And I'll show you that now. So I'm going to open up my command prompt again. And I'll go to my desktop and run my code. So Python exponent calc. And now if I just try to type two, three, I'm gonna get an error. It says the following arguments are required, base and exponent, and it'll show me the values of my flags there. So to fix this, what I'm gonna do is I'll say dash B two and dash E three. And when I hit enter, I'll see two raised to the power of three is equal to eight. So one thing I wanna show you is we can actually use the long names for these. So if I type exponent calc dot py dash dash base two and then dash dash exponent of three, then we'll get the same thing. So if you wanna type out the long way, you can, you just have to remember to include this double dash. So that covers how to use argparse to make required positional arguments, mutually exclusive arguments and required flags. As always, a big thank you for watching. And if you wanna get this source code, consider supporting us on Patreon where all this source code will be posted. But regardless, I hope you all learned a lot and have a wonderful day.